Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on how to share a screen image on an Android device by extending our Unity plugin. We will add a share function to our plugin code that will make use of the Android Intense system. Using Intense is quite complex and powerful, and can require special permission requests from your users. The method I'll show you here avoids the use of permissions, making your app less intrusive. Once again, this tutorial assumes a reasonable familiarity with Unity, Java, Android Programming and Android Studio. Let's get started by loading up our previous project in Unity and adding a share button to the scene. In the hierarchy view, click Create and select UI button. This will create a canvas and add a button directly to it. Select the button, adjust its anchor to be top center and set the Y position to minus 15, which should put the top of the button against the top of the screen. Expand the button in the hierarchy and click on Text. Change the text string to Share. Now we're going to add a text object to the canvas. Highlight it so it shows up in the inspector. Rename it to timestamp and adjust its anchor to be bottom with stretch. Set its left, right, Y position and Y pivot all to zero and the paragraph alignment to center, center. It should now be at the bottom center of the screen. Finally, set its color to white so it's easily seen. Let's make one last modification to the canvas. Select it in the hierarchy view and then change the canvas scaler to use scale with screen size and slide the match slider all the way to the right. Now the button and text will be a reasonable size on your Android device. Double click our plugin test script to open it up in Visual Studio so we can add the C sharp share functions. The first thing we're going to do is add a new callback class that will be called when our share is complete. We could extend the existing alert view callback class by adding a new method but I think that would make the code more confusing. Add the following lines below our existing alert view callback class. Class, share image callback, colon, Android Java proxy. Private, system.action, int, share handler. Public, share image callback, system.action, int, share handler in, colon, base, plugin name, plus, quotes, dollar, share image callback, close quotes. Share handler equals share handler in. Public void on share complete, int result. Debug.log, share completed, plus result. Is sharing screenshot equals false? If share handler doesn't equal null, share handler result. The callback method on, on share complete will be called by our Java code with the result of the share operation. As we're done with the share method, we can clear the is sharing screenshot flag at this time and then call a custom method, if any, passed from the C-sharp code. We will also need some additional class variables, so add these lines. Public button, share button, public text timestamp, static bool is sharing screenshot. Share button will hold a reference to the button we created on the canvas while timestamp will hold a reference to the text object. Is sharing screenshot will be true while we're in the sharing method and only cleared once the callback is called from our Android code. This is to prevent multiple shares being triggered as the code is not re-entrant. Right click on button and select quick fix then using unityengine.ui. In our start method, add the following lines. If timestamp not equal null, timestamp.gameObject.setActive false. This will hide the timestamp text until we're going to use it. Remove the update method as used by the previous version of the plugin. We'll no longer need any of this. Create the method we'll connect to the on-screen button by adding the following lines. Public void share button tapped. If share button not equal null, share button.gameObject.setActive false. If timestamp not equal null, timestamp.text equals system.datetime.now.toString quotes mm slash dd slash yyyy space hh colon mm colon ss close quotes. Timestamp.gameObject.setActive true. Share screenshot application.product name plus screenshot int results lambda debug.log share completed with plus result show alert dialog new string array share complete share completed with plus result okay if share button not equal null share button.gameobject.setActive true 
if timestamp not equal null, timestamp.gameObject.setActive false. Here we hide the share button and enable the timestamp text after setting it to the current date and time. This just adds a watermark to the screenshot. In a real application, you'd probably not do this. Next, we call the actual method that is used to create and share the screen image, passing in a caption, which we set to the name of the application and append the word screenshot, along with an anonymous function that we called when the method completes. This method pops up an alert dialog to let the user know we're done and re-enables the share button and hides the timestamp text. Add the following lines. Public void share screenshot string caption system.action int share complete if is sharing screenshot debug.log error already sharing screenshot aborting return is sharing screenshot equals true start coroutine wait for end of frame caption share complete this is our generic share screenshot function that is called from the method we previously added we check to make sure we're not already sharing screenshot then start a coroutine to wait for the end of the next frame. Next, add these lines. I enumerator, wait for end of frame, string caption. System.action int share complete. Yield return new, wait for end of frame. Texture 2D image equals screen capture dot capture screenshot as texture. Debug.log image size plus image.width plus x plus image.height. Byte array image png equals image dot encode to png. Debug.log png size plus image png dot length. If application platform equals equals runtime platform dot android, plugin instance dot call, share image, new object array, image png, caption, new, share image callback, share complete. Object dot destroy image. This coroutine will grab the frame buffer as a texture, but after waiting for the end of the frame to ensure the frame is fully rendered. We convert the 2D texture to a PNG and pass that, the caption, and the callback function to our Java method after verifying we're actually on an Android device. Finally, we can destroy the 2D texture as it's no longer needed. With the C modifications completed, switch back to Unity and wait for a few seconds while the code compiles. Now we need to hook up the UI items to our script and set the button on click to share button tapped. Highlight the main camera and drag the button object into the share button line of plugin test in the inspector. Drag the timestamp object into the timestamp line. Highlight the button object and scroll the inspector to the on click method. Click plus and then drag the main camera object into the object holder that appears. Click the drop down beside runtime only and select plugin test dot share button tapped. Save the scene. Switch to Android Studio and open the plugin project from the previous tutorial. If you've been using my setup, then this project is inside your Unity project. Create the callback interface by adding the following lines below the existing alert view callback definition. Public interface, share image callback, public void, on share complete, int result. Remember, the name of the interface must match the name we used in the c -sharp code, though Java will prefix it with a dollar when the AAR is built. Before we continue with adding the share methods, let's fix an error in the show alert view code. This needs to be called on the UI thread, otherwise problems could occur. To make the changes pretty simple, we'll just wrap the function as a runnable and cause it to execute on the correct thread. Add the following lines just after the methods declaration line. Main activity dot run on UI thread new runnable at override public void run. And before the closing curly brace, add the following lines. Close curly, close curly, close parenthesis, semicolon. And that's it done. Now we can continue with the share code. Add the following lines. Public void share image final byte array image png, final string caption, final share image callback, callback, main activity dot run on UI thread, new runnable, at override, public void run. As with the modifications to show alert view, we're going to make sure this function is executed on the UI thread by enclosing the majority of the code as a runnable that is sent to the right thread. Type int result equals zero. File image file equals new file main activity dot get files dir screen grab dot png 
file output stream, image stream. We're going to write the byte array to a file in the app's files folder, so we don't need any special permissions to save it, though the actual writing needs to be enclosed in a try catch clause. Try log.i log tag writing image to image file dot get absolute path. Image stream equals new file output stream image file. Image stream dot write image png. Image stream dot close. URI content URI. If the files write correctly, then we need to build a URI that will point to the file. Normally, we'd need to write the file to external storage if we want to send it to another application via an intent. But there's a little known system built into Android called File Provider. Here we use our activity as a file provider and create a URI that will use it. We'll also make some manifest and res changes to make this work, but we'll do that after the Java modification. Add the following. Try. Content URI equals file provider dot get URI for file main activity com dot cwg tech dot unity dot file provider comma image file. If content URI not equal null log dot i log tag got URI plus content URI. If you've used a different bundle name for this plugin, you'll need to adjust the string passed to the file provider and it will need to match what you add in the manifest later. Now that we've got a, the URI that points to the file we created, we'll add it to the intent object along with some additional setup. As before, wrap all this in a try catch block so errors will not crash your app. Add, try, intent share intent equals new intent. Share intent dot set action, intent dot action underscore send. Share intent dot set data and type content URI Main activity dot get content resolver dot get type content URI. Share intent dot put extra intent dot extra stream content URI. If caption not equal null, share intent dot put extra intent dot extra text caption. Main activity dot start activity intent dot create chooser share intent share with result equals one. This will combine the image file and the caption in an intent object, and we set the data and type so the intent chooser knows where it can send it. At this point we've done as much as we can and set the results to 1. Finish the method by adding the catch statements with the following lines. Catch, exception e, e.print stack trace, log.i, log tag, error sharing intent, plus e. Catch, exception e, e.print stack trace log.i log tag error getting uri plus e catch exception e e dot print stack trace log.i log tag error writing file plus e callback dot on share complete result the final action is to call the callback method with the result value which will be one if we presented the share chooser and zero if anything failed along the way at this point, there is no way for our application to know if the share occurred. We'll take a look at fixing that in a whole other tutorial. That's all the Java code updated, but before we build and run the code, we still have some other modifications to do. In the Android Studio project hierarchy, expand the Unity tab, and then double click on the manifest. We're going to define the file provider info, and that needs to be in an application block. Add the following lines. Application provider. Android authorities equals com.cwgtech.unity.file provider Android name android.support.v4.content.file provider android.grantURI permissions equals true Android exported equals false meta dash data Android name equals android.support.file underscore provider underscore paths Android resource equals at XML slash file paths. Provider, close application, close manifest. You'll also need to change the current manifest line by removing the slash before the greater than sign at the end of the line. Once again, if you use a different package name, you'll need to update the authority line to match your name with dot file provider appended. This string needs to exactly match the string you pass to file provider in our Java method. 
We're using Android Support.v4 as our content provider, so we'll also need to include that in our library project. To do this, click File, Project Structure. Click on the Unity module in the hierarchy. Now click on the Dependencies tab. Click the plus button at the bottom left of that window. Click Jar Dependency in the pop-up, and then navigate to your Android SDK folder. On a Mac, this defaults to Home Directory Library Android SDK, while on Windows, this will be in your user's app data slash local slash Android slash SDK folder. Then navigate to Extras, Android, Support, V4. Select the android-support-v4.jar and click Open. This will modify your Gradle file to include this file directly into your AAR. If you prefer, you can also just copy the android-support-v4jar file directly to your Unity Plugins Android folder and let Unity include the file by itself. Finally, we need to add an XML resource file. Expand the res item in the Android Studio project hierarchy, right-click on res, and add a new directory. Call it XML. Select that folder, right-click on it, and create a new file. Call it filepaths.xml. Double-click it to make sure it's open in the editor and add the following lines less than question mark xml version equals 1.0 encoding equals utf-8 question mark greater than paths xmlns colon android equals http colon slash slash schemas dot android dot com slash apk slash res slash android files dash path name equals files root path equals slash Close paths. This defines the file's root path as root, allowing the file provider to find the screenshot we saved. With all these modifications completed, we can build the project using the green play button and the Gradle copy plugin function. Once that done, once that's done, we can return to Unity and build the project. Once again, I'm using the emulator so we can see the plugin working. After a few seconds, the app will launch on your target device. You can see the share button, but the timestamp text is currently hidden. Note that if the app fails to launch, make sure you included the support-v4.jar file correctly, either in the AAR or copy to the Android plugin folder of your Unity project. Tap the share button. The share button will hide and the timestamp will appear, shortly followed by the intent chooser dialog. Note that the text we supplied to the chooser appears at the top of the dialog. As I'm running on the emulator, my options are limited but tapping on messages will let me compose a message with the image as an attachment. The text we passed as a caption will appear as text typed by the user. You can view the image from the messages app and verify that the timestamp value is close to your current time so you know the image is fresh. When you return to our app, you should see the alert view dialog with a one as a result. If you run on a real device, then you'll get more share options, including apps such as Facebook and Twitter, if they're installed. And there you have it. We have now added a share function to Unity that allows the user to send a screenshot to various activities on their device without leaving your app. Use this to let users send high score images or new level images to their friends. We've also managed to do this without popping up permission requests that might cause your users to distrust your app. I hope you find this tutorial useful and are able to use it to add sharing to your apps. As always, please follow me on Twitter or visit my blog. You can see the addresses on the screen and in the text below. I've also posted this tutorial code directly onto GitHub, which is also linked below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.